So if you do strbos, it will give you structure of that data. If you only want to look at just a top few, so there's a function called head. So head gives you first six rows. And similarly, there's another function tail, which will give you last six rows of data, but it will do it for like all 59 variables. Instead of uh, saying default, you can say, I want only three, not six. So then you get only three. Summary BOS, it will give you all kinds of summaries. Actually, this data was from 2022 season. So second column is year of the season. So obviously it is all 2022. Sometimes a summary may not make sense. For example, ID of the game. So we don't do any algebra with or mathematics with ID. But if you look at a variable like field goals made, FGM, so minimum is zero, maximum is 19 for a player. Field goals for three pointers made and three pointers attempted, and then the percentage and so on. So what pie chart does is basically present some information in a graphical fashion. And usually it is not done for numeric data or integer. Usually we do this for a factor kind of data. So we try to create some kind of table first. So to create a table, the function is table, Boston and dollar sign. I'm going to use SLUG opponent, this third one. Please note that 884 is not the number of matches Celtics have played because for one match, you have several players data. So each match may have several rows representing each player and their performance. So 884 is not really a number of matches, but how many players appeared. So with Atlanta, like there may be like some repeat games. So multiple times a player may have appeared. So 43 is not the number of games. So I'm going to save this in tab. We run this. And whatever table we saw earlier will be saved in tab now. So for pie chart, simply say pie and tab. Any plot that you make will appear in your fourth window. Now this plot can be customized. For example, you can put a comma after tab, hit enter, and you can say col for color equal. So because there are too many categories, I will use or borrow colors from rainbow. Let's say 30. So it will change the colors as per our liking. It is always a good idea to give a title to any plot. I'm just putting some title here. The title is going to appear here at the top. So for bar plot, the function is bar plot tab and run. It will make a default bar plot, which may look like this, but you can always customize it. If you don't like the colors, you can say, I want a rainbow style. And other thing is on my screen, uh, not all names are visible. We have a function. LAS, which is for basically labels as. I can say labels as. So you want labels as maybe two. Second style, you see the labels become vertical. I think one is default. So one is horizontal, two is vertical. So if I keep one, then it goes back to the default setting. Two looks better because it can accommodate more. Anytime you have question about any function like this bar plot, how do I know? that I need to use LAS or anything else, go to console, put a question mark and type name of the function, question mark bar plot. And suddenly your fourth window becomes help window. It gives you uh, default settings that are used and what each uh, argument means. So everything is explained. It gives you a lot of examples. So it has a very strong help library. Now these two plots, as you know, pie chart or bar plot, we want to use them for factor kind of variables. We don't make a pie chart or bar plot with numeric variables or integer variables. For numeric variables, we use plot like histogram, H-I-S-T. But then we have to supply a variable that is numeric. If I say B-O-S and then dollar sign out of this entire list of 59 variables, I need to pick up one, which is numeric. So dollar sign. If I do P, ETS, that stands for points made by a player. Immediately it gives us a histogram. You can see right skewed histogram. The tails are longer on the right side. You can see uh, less and less players make 50 or 50 plus points, obviously. In Boston Celtics, usually it is Tatum. Number of times the players made between 30 and 40 points is obviously slightly higher. So that's very common. Brown and Tatum usually do that. Then there are a lot of players 
who made less than 10 points. But this histogram again can be customized. This is the default. Actually, I could have gone in the same row instead of hitting enter and coming down. You can keep on adding features, but then the line becomes too long. I prefer to just hit enter and insert uh, things like color green. It can be turned to green. Dark green, it may look like this. Although it may not uh, make sense here, but rainbow should work. 25 different colors. I'll stick to green here. We can give a main title, points per player per game. X axis, uh, it says uh, BOS dollar sign points. So that looks odd. XLAB is for X axis label. This is points made. It changes to point made, the title, color, and so on. Scatter plot, you can use for studying two variables. Plot. Out of the list of all the variables, suppose I want to plot the PTS that we used just now and then tilde sign, which means the point versus there's another variable in your data, which is called minutes. How many minutes a player has played? And the data is Boston. So it's a scatter plot between points. So whatever you put here, that goes on the Y axis. And whatever you put here, that goes on X axis. Y as a function of X. So obviously, number of minutes a player plays, obviously they have higher chance of scoring. Players who play only for two, three minutes, obviously end up scoring less. There is another function actually in R. It's called simply pairs. A matrix of scatter plots is produced. That's what the description says. I don't want to put all the variables in Boston, all 59 variables, because that will be very messy. If I want to select some specific variables, I can use a square bracket. Now, a square bracket can contain uh, two different type of numbers. First number is number of rows, and second is number of columns. If before comma, if I don't put anything, that means all 884 data points. But out of uh, 59, suppose I only want from 30 to 35th variable, like those columns. So I can specify 30 to 35. 30th column was FGA field goals attempted and 35th was a percentage of free throws. This one is between FGA and FG3A. Looks like people who attempted a lot of field goals, they also attempted a lot of uh, three pointers. Similarly, there is an increasing pattern here. So actually this is this and this are mirror image. Although this plot is uh, good, the only thing is uh, there is upper triangle, for example, may be redundant. We get all that information from the lower triangle and upper triangle is just a mirror image of the other. So there are thousands of libraries, free libraries that are available. So if you select library and type name of one of the libraries called Psych, P-S-Y-C-H. So if I run this library, I get an error. It says there is no package called Psych. But if you give uh, one or two seconds to your RStudio Cloud, it is smart enough to figure out if you look at the top, this uh, yellow triangle, package psych required, but not installed. So you can click install and it will install instantly. So that's one way of installing a package. Or in the fourth window, if you click on packages, click install, you can type name of the package. P-S-Y-C-H. -E and then click install. That also will do the same thing. So it hardly takes uh, any time. One thing always uh, we need to remember is sometimes we miss that. We install a package, still that package is not available to us. We have to run the library line. So when you run the line, now the package will be available. In this package, uh, there is a function called pairs.panels and this is from site package. Select and I want to do the same thing now, what we did earlier, 30 to 35. You'll see that this plot is a very different from the earlier one. If you want to look at the earlier plot, you don't need to actually run again. If you click on this back button, it will take you to the previous plot. Whatever we have done so far, everything is there. Now this plot has not only the scatter plots along with trend lines, but also you have the histograms for each variable. In the upper triangle, it has a correlation coefficients. So for example, the highest value that I see is 0.83. The correlation between FGA and FG3A is quite high. So this correlation coefficient can vary between negative one and positive one. 
a value closer to zero is basically no correlation. And a value closer to plus one means very strong positive correlation. If you try to find mean in Boston Celtics data, BOS, for one of the variables called PCT, FT, percentage of free throws made. So if I run this line, it says NA, not available. But I know that there is a variable. It has a lot of missing values, but there are also values in it. If I run summary, so one thing you'll notice is uh, towards the end, it says N is 434. So out of 884 data points or rows, there were 434, like almost 50% of the data have N is in it. Not every player in the team always is doing free throws. There may be some players who do it and some players never do it. When it tries to find a percentage, it may not have it. If you still want to find the mean from the remaining data points at least, what you'll have to do is you have to tell R that NA dot RM, so NA means uh, that missing data not available and remove. So when calculating, you want to remove this, you say true, T-R-U-E or simply T. So now if you run this, it will tell you that based on the data available, if you ignore all the NA values missing data points, it will give you 80.97. Standard deviation, not available. But if you are ready to ignore missing data points, you can say NA dot RM and then it will give you a value. Let's say we have BOS and square brackets, this exclamation mark, which usually stands for not complete dot cases. So as the name indicates uh, whether the cases are complete in Boston data, that's number of for the rows and columns. We want to say everything. So for example, one, two, three, four is there. Five is not there. And then you have six, then seven, eight, nine, ten 10 uh, is not there. Then 11th row are there. It runs basically those rows where the cases are not complete, basically missing. This is rows with, you can say at least one data missing dimension of Boston, we know it's 884 rows and 59 columns. If we want to create a new data object and place within that data na dot omit, omit any data point or row where data is missing, I just want to check what we will be left with. If I do dimension of new instead of 884, now I only have 439 rows. That also tells us that we should not uh, blindly just uh, remove all the data points from any data we are analyzing because very quickly, like here, almost you are at 50%. Although we have all 59 columns, but we lose a lot of data points 